Hi friends, in today's battle, the battle tanks are the force that the enemy has to reckon with and are force multipliers. Our army has got the T-72, the T-90 and the main battle tank Arjun as its mainstay at present. But then these tanks are in the tonnage of 50 to 60, 65 tons, which is heavy. And these are performing very well in the deserts and the plains of Punjab. But then they have been transported to the high altitudes of Leh and Ladakh, where the Chinese are pinpricking us and are having a confrontation. At these high altitudes or these terrains, these tanks are supposedly not very effective. Like recently in the Sheok River, due to a flash flood, a tank got washed and five army men lost their lives. India did have a light tank called the PT-76 which has gone out of service and these tanks have floating capabilities and river crossing capabilities which are utilized for crossing rivers and canals. Then we have the infantry combat vehicle which transports the troops from a place to another place and can also float across rivers and canals but then to sustain the flash floods is difficult because the tank floating capabilities tend to go out of control. So there is a need to develop a lighter tank which can cross such rivers, nalas and canals effectively in the eastern sector, in the northern sector and can be transported easily. So, the India has put the Zoravar light tank on the design board and the prototypes are rolling out so that the Indian Army can get these tanks which are indigenized. The Zoravar is an Indian light tank which is designed to have a high power to weight ratio along with substantial firepower, protection, surveillance and communication capabilities. It was designed to provide the Indian Army with the versatility to execute operations in varying terrain against diverse threats and equipment profile of its adversaries. The tank is named after the 19th century Dogra General Zoravar Singh. Now, as you know, the light tanks have got renewed focus and interest in recent times, primarily, like I said, due to the flaring situation in remote and inaccessible areas, due to these Indochino skirmishes. In extreme high altitudes of Ladakh, it is difficult to operate the T-72, T-90s and the Arjuns because of their engine conditions and heavy weight. So we need a lighter tank which has got a higher power to weight ratio and firing capabilities on the move and flexible position changing capabilities and also the engine should be such that it should not starve for oxygen and should be lesser logistic backup oriented and be self-sustaining. The crew should be able to handle the tank in very harsh and inaccessible conditions. So what are the requirements for a light tank? It should have special modifications like should be able to operate on special type of fuels which further puts the stress on the logistic 
to a minimal like the K9 Vajra self propelled howitzer that the India has developed in Leh and Ladakh in response to the Chinese aggressions which have been specially modified so that they can function properly in the high altitudes and also the Indian Army has found out that the Chinese side has deployed type 15 tanks which had significant advantage over the assets the Indian Army was fielding at the height of the Galwan Valley. So the project of the light tanks named after General Suravar Singh Galuria who led the 1841 military expedition to Kalash Mansarovar during the Dogra Tibetan War has been launched and after the news of deployment of the Z-048 Chinese light tanks at the Ladakh sector, the Indian Army wants to replace these heavy tanks and operate light tanks in these Himalayan theatres so that they can be more maneuverable without sacrificing firepower. The general staff qualitative requirements or the GSQR has been finalized and in September 22 the acceptance of necessity has been done. The in principle approval has been given and the procedure as per the defense acquisition procedures of 2020 has been complied with and it is a tank with the Make in India initiative. So at the DEF Expo, the model was unveiled and it is proposed that the Indian Army will procure 700 of these tanks once the prototype is tested out in these high altitudes and a full trial has been carried out by the Indian Army in these trying conditions. This new light tank is supposed to be light and maneuverable without sacrificing the firepower. Its capabilities will be supplemented by AI integration with SWAN drones for higher situational awareness, loitering ammunition for high lethality and active protection system as a shield against modern anti-armor systems. India initially decided to use German MTU engines for this Zorava light tank, but due to repeated delays, the Cumin 750 horsepower engine will be used for prototypes. And recent reports suggest that the Rolls-Royce engine has delivered MTU engines for the DRDO project, and there are processes going on to develop an indigenized engine for this tank. The development trials of this tank began in Hajira, Gujarat at the LNT facility because LNT has been given the project and as of January 24, the prototypes are to be rolled out and some of these tanks have been handed over to the Indian Army for trials at the desert and then the second phase will be carried out at the high altitude. Once this prototype trials are fully done, 59 tanks as the pre-production pipeline will roll out and we serve to the Indian Army and then let us see the future of this indigenized Suraval light tank and I am sure TRDO will do a good job along with LNT and we will have a light tank for the high altitudes to give China a fire to fire stand off so that the Chinese know who are their adversaries and do not take any steps which can affect the Indian sovereignty.
So if you have liked what I have been talking about or if you have any other topics which you would like me to speak on, please give it in the comment box below and I will try to deliver it to you in my forthcoming videos. Jai Hind!